Hello everybody. This week, Gran Turismo has given us the wonderful gift of a race with completely random rain. And this is the story of how I won from 37 seconds behind the leader. Every Monday when the new races drop, we like to start from the back on our Monday stream. And we really like to test out which cars are going to be the anti-meta car so I can start preparing to make the anti-meta guide. We of course test out the meta car and we just try to get as many overtakes as we possibly can. Battling and overtaking are really the most fun parts of racing for me. I like hot lapping, of course, that's where it all started for me, but overtakes, that's where it's at. So far, however, I was only being overtaken. If you look at the weather radar, you can see that it was pretty wet at the beginning, but it's definitely already starting to dry out, and I had thought that it was going to be a full wet start. I was very, very mistaken. Just five corners or so into the race, I had already lost two positions, and I didn't realize it, but disaster was about to strike. I wasn't used to this car, I hadn't driven it enough, and I didn't know what the tires were going to be like, and I just floored it. I tried to get the car to rotate without knowing anything about the car, and I just understeered off the track. I tried to be careful as I rejoined, I didn't see Little Moto and I felt really bad about that, but luckily I didn't cause a collision. Little Moto, if you're watching, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to jump in front of you like that. The funny thing is, I wasn't exactly panicked at this point. I started from the back on purpose, and so just being in the very back on the very first lap, it didn't seem like it was that bad. Whenever something like this happens, I just like to joke that it's just more overtaking potential. At about this point, I was thinking, my tires are probably clean by now, even though the other guys are in the OP car and they probably have the racing hard tires instead of the intermediates, maybe my pace can make up for it if I just really lock it in, figure out how to drive this car and just do good laps or just do good corners, hoping that it wasn't going to take multiple laps to catch up to people. I'd considered for a second since the track was drying off that I might want to go into the pits, but it's nearly a minute long pit delta. I'd have to drive so incredibly fast to make it to even the last place guy so I wasn't really seriously considering it at this point. It also seemed like I was catching up to the 15th position guy, so I figured we'll just pass the pits, we'll just keep our head down, we'll try to do what we can, get good pace, get used to the car, and hopefully we'll get some luck. It was about this point that chat was saying that the race is pretty much all over, and I was almost starting to agree with them, but you know we've been in worse situations than this. I still wasn't quite used to the car, and I actually at this point didn't realize the difference in time per lap that these tires would have. I was starting to feel pretty confident in the car, however, so I went into this corner with full confidence and completely missed the apex. I was, however, pretty happy to see that there was a yellow flag. Sorry, big peepee, -pee, but that was a very small victory for me. At least I wouldn't be in last place anymore. What was pretty cool was that he was in the same car that I was in. So if he did indeed have the racing hard tires, I'd be able to see exactly what kind of difference we could expect with the intermediate tires on a completely dry track. The little meter to the left of the tire wear indicator kind of shows you how much track surface water there is. Anything below the first third means that you don't really need intermediate tires at all. When the second third is fully up to the top, then it's definitely intermediates, maybe even wets, and when it's above that, it's actually standing water on the track, and even wets most likely won't save you. I was catching Child Roland ahead, but I also noticed that Big Pee, Pee was definitely immediately onto my bumper. One of the most difficult things you can do when racing is trying to attack someone ahead while also defending against someone from behind. I was feeling a bit more confident with the car, so I was actually going to try to go for a move, and I didn't realize until I started moving over to the side that I definitely didn't have any overlap. I like to stay in this position though to make people think I might go for a move, even if I'm not about to dedicate myself to it, because sometimes it makes people second guess. I don't necessarily want to scare people into thinking I'm going to dive, though having that little thought in the back of their mind doesn't quite hurt. After setting up multiple dummies and not following through on a dive, I think it kind of ruins the effect. People start trusting me, and <laughs> it's funny, the trust can actually make it so they know they don't have to really worry about me doing anything crazy. It was becoming really apparent that I wasn't quite attacking Child Roland nearly as much as I was actually defending against Big Pee, Pee so I was really hoping that I could get ahead, use the slip behind Child Roland, but then... Big Pee, Pee was up right next to me just as Child Roland moved over to get the slip from the person ahead, and it became really clear that my tires were going to hold me back a lot. So at this point, we're just hoping for rain. Situations like this, I just kind of try to reset. I just do what I can, drive the best I can, and sometimes it doesn't work out. You never know what's going to happen at the back of a race, though. 
And as these three all collided, I realized, haha, it's an opportunity. I might be able to make an overtake. Sneaking past with just a little bit of oversteer, I thought if I could just get ahead of him for this next corner, I could stay in big PP slip and then perhaps even lose this guy going into a Rouge and Radeon. Being on the outside leading into turn one, as long as you can trust the person on the inside, isn't usually that bad because you can most of the time get a better exit. And a lot of people track out there, so I figured I'd be able to get the slip from the people ahead. I did not expect that they'd be able to get so far ahead, and we came together a little bit. It wasn't exactly his fault. I almost gave up on that game of chicken, but luckily I did get ahead, and I was able to maintain 15th position. Not only that, the two guys ahead were side by side up Orusian Radeon, so they'd gone slow enough that I was able to maintain slipstream with them. I was incredibly far off the pace at that point, but I owed it to all of the mistakes I made as well as the battles and defending that I had to do in that last lap. My confidence was getting boosted again, however, since I did catch this Audi TT. He decided to wait for me to make a move to then put his car in front of me, so I have to collide with him unless I'm able to react somehow, but his gamble didn't pay off because he didn't realize how much faster I'd be able to take that on the outside. That is fitting justice for someone who's going to do something dirty like that. Now, a lot of people don't realize what they're doing is silly, but imagine doing that in real life. There's a guy that we race with. His name is Kyle, and he actually races in real life. And he talked about someone who was actually doing that on a real racetrack. And the guy who kept doing that immediately got his racing license revoked. If you're going to do something so dangerous where you would move in front of a car as they make a pass attempt, you're going to cause an accident someday. And if you're going to do something that would cause an accident in order to defend in Gran Turismo, that's just dirty driving. Don't do that kind of thing or you're going to get embarrassed by someone who passes you on the outside after you do it. Now, after I was done congratulating myself on a dirty driver, and by the way, we've raced against that guy a lot. His nickname is a problem for you. He is the kind of guy who revels in being dirty, so I don't mind posterizing him in my video. But yeah, as soon as I realized that that was done, I looked and saw how far ahead Big PP was. He was multiple seconds ahead after all of that, which meant that, yeah, he was on the racing hards and I was stuck back here, not able to do anything with my intermediate tires. I noticed at this point that he did actually catch up to someone else. And if someone else is that far back, maybe they're on the same tire strategy that I'm on. Now, this is another one of those small victories. Zaskar is actually a buddy of mine. He's from the same city I'm in. Shout out to Zaskar. Now, he is in absolutely the funniest car in the entire class. For some reason, Gran Turismo decided to make a Group 4 Bugatti Veyron. They didn't make a Group 3, they made a Group 4. And most of the Group 4 cars have like 350 horsepower, something along the lines. So they took a Bugatti and they detuned the hell out of it to make it fit Group 4 and didn't bother putting a Group 3 version in. So you can't choose it for the manufacturer races. Anyways, it's hilarious. But with him in that car, and potentially him being on the same tire strategy, I figured maybe if I can get up there or if Big PP passes him, then, you know, we'll have some fun. We'll have a battle on our hands and I won't just be cursed to drive by myself for the next five laps. A problem for you was now just a problem for child Roland. And so if I wasn't able to catch up with Zaskar, however, I was just going to be hot lapping, hot lapping incredibly slowly, I might add. I had mentioned that I assumed I'd be able to do mid 29s or at least 30s just low 30s and i had just set a 235.7 with only having to make one move on a person which meant that that was really close to my actual pace with these tires now with zaskar in a fast car and me stuck with a car that i don't really know even if we were on the same tires the depression was setting in I realized I was still probably just going to drive by myself, and as you can guess, nothing really big happened for a while, so we're going to jump ahead. After a lap and a half, I did catch our friend. With that hilarious Bugatti, it's still all-wheel drive, and it does actually have a lot more power than the rest of the Group 4 class, but it's still, <laughs> it's still Group 4 power. But either way, I think he was eating through his tires, because if you look down at my tires, I've eaten through a lot of them. It makes sense. You can't expect intermediate tires to last that long in the dry, so now I get the battle that I was hoping for. I mentioned this in almost all of my videos, but when you're racing against people you can trust, you can do things like go for an outside pass attempt. 
There are people who I would never try that with. And our buddy Zaskar wasn't about to take any kind of chances. He's always clean. And so that was a pretty easy move right there. To tell the complete honest truth, I think he just let me have it because I know that he could have definitely put up a fight, but I figured he was probably thinking that we were both just sad back here. We don't need to waste each other's time. I was hoping for a battle because I thought it was the only thing we could do. And I think he was just thinking, I don't want to ruin the pace that we've got. But either way, love you, Zaskar. Thanks, buddy. Another thing that I frequently talk about is anytime we're on a big straight, that's an opportunity for me to kind of get my bearings and see exactly what's going on with the race assess my situation and see if there's anything I can do. And if you look at that weather radar, that is a lot of blue. That is a lot of rain. The lighter blue doesn't really mean much. It's not gonna really accumulate on the ground, but as it kept moving, we started seeing more and more of those dark blue spots. And if we can get a lot more of those dark blue spots, that meant maybe we can make something happen. Now, I obviously can't corner while looking at the weather radar, but it was so blue that I could see out of just my peripheral vision that that was definitely a good amount of rain. Now, this was from a replay. I'm going to go ahead and grab a part of my live stream so we can see exactly how far back I was at this point. I was only 36 seconds behind. If anyone at all decided to pit right now, I would be a minimum of 20 seconds ahead of them by the time they came out. The weather radar showed almost an entire rain coverage, and you could see the rain coming down at this point. If people didn't pit, they're going to have to try to make it through Spa on racing hard tires, on slicks in the wet. In Spa is especially difficult. Not only does it have a ton of corners, obviously, but it has some incredibly high speed sections where you can just completely go sideways because of standing water. And all of those high speed sections lead to incredibly slow corners. So you've got to time that absolutely perfectly if you're on the slicks and trying to just survive. Looking at the track surface water meter on the left, it is completely, completely out of the first third. As you can see, none of the top three decided to pit. I wouldn't either. If the choice is between automatically losing a race or taking a gamble and maybe having some drifting fun in the rain, obviously I'm going to take the drifting fun. And that's what those boys did. That's not even the only consideration either. Most of them were able to make it through the bus stop right here without any kind of incident whatsoever. They were able to continue their pace. They had already made it up through Eau Rouge, Radion, and so they were totally fine. If the conditions stayed like this, they were going to be okay and they'd have absolutely nothing to worry about. Andrew, Little Moto, both of them did go into the pits. And at that point, they're just hoping, of course, that maybe everyone else is going to go into the pits. And even if they get passed by me, they might not have even known that I was back here. But even if they got passed by me, they'd still be able to maintain some positions against people who didn't if the conditions get much worse. As soon as I saw this first yellow flag and saw a completely backwards car directly ahead, I realized things were going to start going my way. As you probably know, it's not exactly uncommon for people to spin out and crash on that corner. But in a Group 4 car in Gran Turismo, it's usually harder than not to spin out and crash there. Especially considering you can just drive straight off the track and come back on without really any incident if you make a mistake. I could definitely start feeling how greasy the track was getting. You'll see I have to make a lot of corrections on each of these corners. And if it was hard for me in the intermediates, it was definitely hard for the people that didn't have the intermediates. Another one bites the dust. Our friend Jay Funk. Poor guy. As soon as I stopped feeling bad for J-Funk, however, I realized he was in the GTR. He had all-wheel drive, and he's a competent driver. And here's another yellow flag. I knew at this point that things were definitely going my way. In fact, I'm pretty sure I was maniacally laughing at this point. So far, we've seen four yellow flags. We've seen two people completely sideways into the walls, and now we're seeing the signs knocked off into the track. People are definitely struggling here. Another driver completely off the track. I think it's our friend Kabi. Yep. Hi, Kabi. Ahead of him, De Sydney, another competent driver. Mr. MCA, another very competent driver. De Sydney right here, completely sized off the track. At this point, I was most definitely laughing maniacally. Damien, one of the most incredible drivers that I've ever met, can't quite keep it on the track. Now everyone's just struggling to stay on the track, not go off and cost themselves more time, give themselves a penalty, anything like that. V Botas, who I'm pretty sure is a Smurf account, very good driver going extremely slow, another person in the wall, and the only person that we have left in front of us 
is Mr. Grove. And Grove did a fantastic job of continuing to keep his pace. I don't know if he was already on the straight when things got crazy or if he had just prepared for it. He's a good driver, so he might have just really anticipated what was going on. So I was pretty sure we were still going to be able to catch him. And right here, I realized it was absolutely going to happen. He was off the track. He was going everywhere. And then this. No matter how good your control is, I think the limit for the hard tires in the rain is something like 20 miles an hour. I was able to actually win a race that started raining at the very end without going into the pits. And I was literally going 20 miles an hour around the corners in the hard tires. And now all that was left was try to stay away from Zaskar. I had to quickly stop patting myself in the back though. As you can see, things were getting extremely dangerous, almost to the point where you'd need full wet tires. I'd never actually been in a race where you would need full wet tires at any point, and I didn't know if this was going to be one of the times where I would actually need them. So I was going to just try to be as careful as I could, but I also had Zaskar behind me. And if he was more brave than I was and was able to handle it better, plus with the benefit of him having all wheel drive, then I could still lose this. So I had to push. I had to push as hard as I thought that I safely could, and so I was actually terrified at this point. What I didn't realize until afterwards, though, was Askar actually had a penalty. So I wasn't in quite as much danger as I thought I was, but I didn't realize that. And so I was still trying to push. You can see from my braking and my throttle inputs that I was still trying to do whatever I could just to slow the car down without sliding, and that was definitely a challenge. Now, I live in Oregon. It rains nine months out of the year, and I've only owned powerful rear-wheel drive cars since I've been driving. But Zaskar also lives here. He actually lives in the same city I do, so that man has the exact same benefit that I do. I think you can see just how tentative I was with all of the inputs. I don't think I went full brakes at all during this lap. And you can see that I almost lost the rear end, just giving it a little bit of brakes going into X right there. Having felt that and having felt what I thought was the limit of the car under braking, that's what I knew I had to push. I wasn't going to be able to get out of the corners nearly as fast as Zaskar, but this car had to weigh a lot less, so if I could push it into the corners and just rotate the car under the brakes, then I thought that I'd be safe. I did put a little bit more space between myself and Zaskar, however there was still one incredibly long, mostly straight section coming up, so in my mind I thought I just have to continue pushing it in the braking zones and hopefully we'll be able to do something like that. However, it was almost my undoing. That was an absolute brown pants moment, but luckily I was able to save it. Thank you, drifting. I say this a lot, but drifting probably didn't make me any faster, but it definitely kept me out of situations like that or kept me out of the wall in situations like that. I obviously still couldn't relax though. There was one more really big braking zone, two more corners after this little kink, and then I'd be home free. I don't think I was actually looking in the rear view, or else I probably would have seen that Zaskar had to serve that penalty. I was just focusing on not sliding, especially after two corners ago when I almost went completely sideways off the track. It was about right here though I realized we made it. Please don't forget to like and subscribe if you like this video because I'll be making videos like this as long as I keep having awesome races. I'm going to finish it off however with my live reaction on my stream. <laughs> Thank you, Box. Oh, that's so funny. Oh, I can't believe it. <laughs> oh, it's so funny. Oh, my God. 37 seconds behind at one point. Thank you, guys. Thank you all. That is so funny. That is the funniest shit. Ridiculous! Absolutely ridiculous! <laughs> I was so depressed. Like the first four laps. I'm like, come on! Oh, I can't believe it. 37 seconds at the start of lap six. Thank you, Kim. Damien, can you believe it? <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>